test. Test. Testing. Everybody. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord, everybody. Praise Somebody give the Lord some praise in here if you love the Lord. Hallelujah. We come to worship and lift up the name of Jesus today. Amen. We welcome you to Greater Life Ministry of the Apostolic Faith. We come to praise and lift up the name of God today, for he alone is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God is great. He's greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great. He's greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I'm singing, God is great. He's greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great. He's greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
going to be followed, amen, by my niece, Kim Clark, Kim Clark, <laughs> amen, we came to give God praise, thank you all for being here today, thank you all for being here, amen, without you, it would be my wife and myself in our front room, and we don't mind being in our front room, amen, thank you musicians for being here, amen, much love to you, my brothers, sound good, sound good, amen, thank you, Lord, amen, at this time, pray. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and give him some praise. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody put your hands together and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you. Oh, Lord. Yeah. 
right there. I've got it. Well, well, tell them. I found just what I've been looking for. I know I never had to search no more. I got it. Come on, if you got it. Well, I got it. Well, I don't have to search no more. Tell them what I've been looking for. You say, I got it. I got it. Come on, say, I got it. Yeah. Thank God I don't have to search the floor. 
45, amen, but the third Sunday, we're going to have it at 3.30, a 3.30 service, amen, we will invite out the sons of Bishop Howard Swansea, amen, they will be here preaching, our first speaker uh, for next month will be Minister Anthony uh, Trotter will be here, Minister Anthony Trotter, amen, young man who, amen, we have loved and we have watched grow up, amen, he has, he was the baby of the group, he went downtown L.A. all by himself and ran a homeless shelter all by himself for about two years. Amen. We were de uh, delighted. My wife, amen, was amen, able to help him out. Amen. A very good anointed speaker of God. So on the third amen. Sunday, amen, we will be having that service. We will have guests, uh, churches to come in with us. Amen. But we thank God for you that are here today. Amen. We thank God for allowing us. Amen. Mostly family here today. Amen. We thank God for family. Amen. Because if 
we didn't have family, amen, our churches wouldn't be able to start, amen. I don't know about you, but I think God is going to do a great thing yeah, here, yeah. amen. I have my expectations is from the Lord. I believe, amen, he's called us to this ministry, amen. And I was talking to a young man the other day, amen, my nephew, he lives in San Diego now, amen. He said his pastor started in the parking lot of the church, and now he has, how many campuses did he say? six campuses. Amen. And he's doing great things. I don't know what the Lord is going to do for us, but I know he's going to do great things. I want you to come in greater light, to come with an attitude to worship. Amen. And forget about everything else. Forget about uh, what's going to happen afterwards, but just come in here to worship. And I guarantee if you come here to worship, God will meet us here. Amen. He will anoint you. The anointing makes the difference. Amen. We want God to anoint him. Amen. Today is Women's Day. Amen. Uh, our women are in charge. Amen. My lovely wife and my lovely niece will be speaking today. Amen. I won't be uh, speaking today. They will be speaking. Amen. We thank God for them. So every fifth Sunday will be Women's Day. Our women will be in charge. Amen. And our Bible studies are 730 on Thursday online only. Amen. And to the Lord. One, one thing I know, we're just passing through. And I was just thinking, man, why the Lord uh, chose me at this age? to start a ministry and I was saying what seems like a curse is a blessing because guess what I don't have that long to do it hallelujah <laughs> amen whether it be by the rapture or by just growing old amen I don't have that long to do it but with the strength that I have I'm going to give it my best shot amen and at this time amen give the Lord a hand praise that's all of our announcements we're going to go right into our offering amen we're going to Ask you to give as the Lord has prospered you to give, amen, to give liberally, amen, as the Lord has prospered you to give, amen, at this time, amen, we're going to ask our musicians to play a little happy music, it's not that many of us, so it shouldn't take that long for offering, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah. We're going to ask as we're here to give. If you want to give online, if you want to help plant a seed to this ministry, you can give three ways. The ways are Cash App, capital G, capital L Ministry, dollar sign, capital G, capital L Ministry. You can also give Zell. Zell is the whole word, greater life ministry, in the phone number 562-292-3120, 292 3120 Greater Life Ministry, or you can also give on PayPal. PayPal, amen, will be, amen, Aaron Dykus, Aaron Dykus at 562-292-3120. Whatever you give, amen, we appreciate your liberality, and we'll ask God to give, amen, the blessing back unto you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Come on, take it out with a praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. We thank God. Hallelujah, yeah. Sing a little bit. Came up, I asked my wife, who does she want 
amen, to speak for today. And she said, my niece, amen. She was the first one when we started our business. My wife started a daycare business. My wife came home from Kaiser one day after working 10 years and said, I'm not going back to that job anymore. And she said, I'm going to start my own business. Amen. And God, amen, allowed us to be in this business for about 20 years now. I think our oldest kid, amen, is about, how old are you, Joseph? 16. So 16 years we've been in this business. Amen. And she was the first one that brought her kids to us. Amen. So at this time, with no further ado, amen, uh, let's welcome uh, Sister Rhonda Holland. Let's greet her by saying amen. amen. I Thank you. 
Thank you, God, for his grace and his mercies. Thank you, God, for his goodness. His goodness goes before us, and his mercy is always backing that thing up. So we come to say thank you on this morning. I don't know about you. I didn't come to look at y'all this morning. I didn't come to look at you. Are you over here? I just came to give God some glory, if that's all right. If that's all right, I just came to give him some glory. Hallelujah. Did you come to give him glory? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands if you came to give him glory. Come on and stand on your feet if you came to give him glory. Say hallelujah. What is the highest praise? What is the highest praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. start with chapter, I mean, chapter 4, verse 12, and it says, when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer, do not think because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape, for if you remain silent at this time, mm -hmm. relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, mm -hmm. but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows that, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And our topic today is for such a time as this. In this season, what has God called you to do in this season? Who has he called you to stand in the stead for in this season? What is your purpose in this season? Then Esther sent, his, sent this reply to Mordecai, Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And, and I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, 
I perish. <clears throat> and so we're going to dig a little bit into Esther's history. Esther was Esther was a, actually was sent out of her own land into another land and when she got to that land land she was a slave. Imagine being enslaved to a drunken king and he's that's how he's portrayed in, in, in the Bible. He's portrayed as a drunken king and keeping your heritage a secret. And so Mordecai had instructed Esther to keep her heritage a secret. Something in him told her to keep her heritage a secret. So the king or no, nobody in the court would know that she was a Jew. <clears throat> they did this because Malik, Mordecai knew something was coming. That Haman was evil and that he had something coming for the Jews. For the Jews. So Esther kept it a secret that she was a Jew. And so the book of, in the book of Esther, it's about the Jewish, a Jewish community living in Susa. And Susa is the capital city of the Parish Empire. And so the Jews was, they were exiled from their land and a lot of them went over to the Persian Empire. And some of them did go back to Jerusalem, but a lot of them were misplaced and exiled and in different various of lands. And so, <clears throat> I imagine that Esther was very afraid. Mordecai is asking her to go before the king when it's not her time. And that time, if you went before the king before your time, you would have a surely, you would surely die. There was no if, ands, or buts about it. If you went before the king and it wasn't your time, you would die. You would be put to death. So Esther did not want to go before the king. She did not want to do this thing that was asked of her. But she said, if she perish, let her perish. So she went before the king. And when she went before the king, the king granted her favor. And that favor comes from God. That favor came from God. Yeah. So the, God's name is never mentioned in the book of Esther at all. Not one time. And which is which is pretty funny because God is doing all these things and turning these things around in this book. But his name is never mentioned. Just all the actions of what God can do to turn a situation around is going forth in Esther. So Esther thought everything was lost. Everything was lost. She's like, you know what? I, I just go. If I go, I go. If, if, if I'm, I'm, I'm dead at the end, I'm dead at the end. But what she didn't know that God was working in her favor and God was working on her behalf. And when she went into the court to ask what she needed to ask of the king, he granted her favor. And he told her, anything that you want, I will grant. So she had to be a little sly about it. She didn't uh, tell the king right off. She, she said, well, we'll have, some we'll have a banquet. And in this banquet, she said, since this evil man, since Haman wants to put all the Jews to death, we'll invite Haman along. So at this banquet they had, the king was getting drunk. Haman was over there getting drunk. So that she said, oh, this is the perfect time for me to tell them what my plan is. So she, that first banquet, she didn't say anything. The king said, well, what is your request? Make your request known. She was like, let's talk about it tomorrow. We'll have another banquet. We'll have another banquet. So they had the next banquet. And Esther finally gave her request to the king. And the king granted her request. Yeah. That's called favor with God. Yeah. Wow. Even though she didn't see a way. Thank she didn't Lord. see a way out. She didn't see a way under. She didn't see a way in. She was scared to go in. She was scared to do what God had called her to do. She was scared to step out in faith. So we can't let fear De debilitate us to do the works of God. We can't let fear hold us back. We can't let fear stop us from doing what God has called us to do. Because if Esther didn't go there, all the Jews would have perished. And she, she, she suffered so she can get her people to be free. She, she found favor with the Lord and she found favor with her king. Even though she was kidnapped 
and oppressed, forced to serve to be a queen to the very one keeping her oppressed. When everything is lost and God can't be found anywhere, he's still working to turn the enemy's plan upside down. Please remember that even in your lowest state, in your darkest hour, when you don't see a way, when you can't see a way in and you can't see a way out, that God is working yeah. in your favor. He did it for Esther. He has done it for so many of us here in this yeah. moment. Yeah. I remember a time when um, my son, uh, my oldest son, he was about 16 months old. And he, and he just became ill all of a sudden. And we didn't know what was wrong with him. I, I took him back and forth to this doctor. I took him back and forth to that doctor. They said, take him to the orthopedic specialist. They said, take him over here to this specialist. Take him over here to that specialist. Every specialist he went to, they didn't know what was going on. He was gradually declining. His health was gradually declining. So I finally took him into the next hospital, and they said, take him to the neurologist. The neurologist said, admit that baby right away. Come to find out my baby had meningitis and the meningitis had got into his brain and it was called encephalitis. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, the doctor came in and told me, your son is going to be retarded and immobile. He suffered the encephalitis for so long that it had damaged the left side of his brain. They said he won't, he's going to be, if he, even if he is slow, that would be promising. He's going to be retarded, and he won't be able to walk. So in that moment, I said, well, Lord, you, could, you said you wouldn't put any more on me than I can bear. And I said, you know I can't bear that, Jesus. I said, I haven't, I haven't dropped a tear. I said, I've been looking for you, looking to you. I've been believing in you for full deliverance of my baby. And I, when I tell you, I got on my knees and I fell on my face and I gave it to God. And the very next day, the very next day, God turned that thing around. So now we know I'm as Jehovah Rapha. He's the God that healeth me. He's the God that healeth me. So I found him to be Jehovah Jireh. I found him to be Jehovah Rapha. I found him to be Jehovah Nisi. He's all those things. And, but all I do is have to call him Jesus. I just call him Jesus. I just call him Jesus. And he's everything to me. Hallelujah. I'm thanking God for his goodness and his mercy and his kindness. I hope you all got some of what I said about Esther. And I thank God for the opportunity. But one thing that I do know, that God is still on the throne. He is still working miracles. He is still saving souls. He is still doing what he does best. He is the great I am. He is everything to me. He is that shut up. Give the Lord a hand, praise. I think, I think that calls for a praise break. And then the baby that she's talking about is over there, 16 years old. I think it's time for a praise break. One, two, three, and... <laughs> I think somebody ought to praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, I, I give you a little time. You got about, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. One, two, three, and... Hey, <laughs> 
praying. Good job. Good job. I don't know. Was that your first time? That was her first time speaking before an audience. She told her mama, oh, glory. Uh oh, uh oh, somebody feels something right now. Oh, glory. Uh oh, glory. Amen. And her mama said, you better be careful what, what you ask for. And sure enough, amen, her auntie asked her to speak for today. Amen. God knows. Amen. God knows right where you at. Amen. He'll meet you at the point of your need. I don't know about you, but I want everything the Lord has for me. What about you? I want everything that the Lord, he promised you got joy. Amen. He promised you're going to have joy. Amen. Somebody came in here looking for some joy. Why don't you just out for open your mouth and give him a great big praise right before you have it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, if you don't have Amen. At this time, we're going to have my wife, my beautiful wife of 32 years, amen, to come forward. She always claimed that she's not a, a, a minister, but the God have given all of us the ministry, amen, of reconciliation. So we all ministers. have all given us a witnesses to us. He said, because after the Holy Ghost have come upon you, you shall be my witnesses. He said, start in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And he says, in all the other most parts of the earth. So you are a minister, no matter who you are, or if you're saved, and you are a witness. Amen. We thank God. And amen. God said he would put his words in us. And at the moment that it should come forward, all you have to do is open your mouth and God is right there. So my wife of 32 years, amen, amen, give her a hand as she comes, the first lady of this church, amen, my first lady, amen, my wonderful wife of 32 years, all in a row, no breaks, all in a row, amen, my wife, sister Vanessa, my lady, God bless. So grateful I am full and I'm grateful I'm grateful to the Lord for his presence in our lives I'm grateful for the Lord for his provision in our lives I'm grateful for the Lord to the Lord for his healing in our lives I'm grateful for the Lord to the Lord for being there every time I need him um, I just want to um, put out a special prayer for my niece um, we lost our great nephew in a very tragic way and I want you to remember sister Angela Reese and sister Jewel Reese in the tragic loss of our nephew we buried him yesterday and I just want to you want to keep him in prayer the service was yesterday but we got a long journey to get through it but we know Jesus and we know that he will heal us and we know that he will meet us at the point of our need and I'm so grateful for you Rhonda I am so grateful for you Rhonda when I when I text Rhonda when Rhonda called when I was speaking to her and I asked her to speak, she didn't give any type of reservation. And I didn't know, we don't really know everything we're doing in our ministry. We're trying to figure it out. And we need the Lord to help us. He brought us to it and he's not going to leave us. And I am so rested assured. Uh, Rhonda is a very, very uh, strong young lady. I've, she's my niece, but I've sometimes you just witness people on, on a personal level. And you can see them grow. I've seen you grow, Rhonda. I've seen you go through a lot, a lot of things. And I've seen you persevere. And I've seen you struggle. But you sometimes people can struggle and you don't even see the scars. You don't see. He can make it to where the scars are so hidden, so deep. He'll heal you so good that you won't even, people won't even know what you've been through. The reason why I know, because I see them every day. When I opened my child care all those years ago, she was the first one to sign the contract. I got the picture of her signing the contract. I quit my job with two kids, and Rhonda was the first one. And with Joseph over there, I'm just so thankful for you, Joseph. What a young, nice young man you have become, a respectable young man, an honorable young man. And it's due to your mom and your family and the surroundings that God has given you. Jeremiah, I see you. I see you. He's like, what about me? You too, Jeremiah. You too, Jeremiah. Madeline, I just love you. 
I love you, Josiah. I see you over there. I see you. I see you. Give me a wave, over. I see you. Because Rhonda is so strong, with everything that she's gone through, her family is strong. And this is what this, this um, topic is about today, Queen Esther. Um, when the reason why this topic was chosen, my first lady, Sister Patricia Swansea, texted me the, uh, about a week ago. And she's texted me some very encouraging words. And she, on the bottom of the, the text, she said, this scripture came to mind when I thought about you. And it says, um, for such a time as this. For such a time as this. She didn't know, years ago I purchased a, um, a series on Queen Esther because I've been studying about Queen Esther. Who, who is this person? What does it take to be a queen? What is this? And it's a whole series. So I, but I've been studying it for years. But when she texted me the, the text of encouragement, I just broke down and started crying. I couldn't stop crying because I was like, um, this is a new journey for us. You know, a lot of with women, because this is Women's Day, we have this uh, fortitude that new beginnings, we just have to adapt to what's, what's, what's at stake right now. You know, and sometimes you can plan it out, sometimes you can figure it out, but that's what the best part of being a woman is. The Lord will give you the intuition of do what you need to do to get it done. You know, um, right. we often tease each other uh, right. sometimes if it wasn't for a woman, hmm, I don't know what would happen. I, I just don't know. I, I, I just don't know what would happen. You know, the Lord saw that the man needed help. He saw that. He saw that need. He put him there. If he was there all alone, he was he's like, oh, this brother needs some help. He came up with the plan. We didn't come up with the plan. We didn't ask to be here. He looked over there and saw the brother. He saw the brother with the cords all over the place. He saw the brother with his shirt maybe not tucked in all the way. Or he saw him in the garden with one animal over here half not fed and another one fed. I don't know what the reason he called for a woman, but he said this brother needs some help. So he called for a woman. He put him to sleep. And even when they don't think they need the woman, God said, you need a woman. We know you got it all together, but you need a woman. So I, I just, I'm thankful that I'm a woman because I didn't need help. I, I didn't need, he didn't see that the woman needed help. He said, I'm looking at this fellow over here and he needs some help. So he sent the woman to help. But what the situation is, sometimes the woman try to help. And he don't want no help. He don't want her to do the job that the Lord created her to do. So there is a situation. There's a situation. Queen Esther was not Queen Esther from the start. She became queen. When, when Queen Esther was called to be queen, she was a slave girl. She was an orphan. She was being raised by her uncle. Uncle Mordecai was raising her. Meaning that she had to have some sense of not belonging. If you don't have your mother, you don't have your father, you're raised by a third party. She had to have some type of uh, insecurity or some type of uh, thing. You know, in these days, if you're not raised by your parents, you may be called a foster child or you may be called an adopted child. Mordecai took care of his niece. And they would, like Sister Rhonda said, they, she was a slave girl. And what she was doing? As a slave girl, she was going around doing what she was supposed to do. And doing what she's supposed to do, she found grace yeah, yeah. in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. And there was a position that was created for her. The reason why Queen Esther came to be because there was a first queen. And that queen's name was Vashti. And so the king said, you know, I'm having a party and I'm, I got all this wine and I'm doing it big. And I want my wife to come. I want my wife to come. And Queen Vashti said, I, ain't, I got my own stuff going on. I don't have time to do all that stuff you want done. You have your party and I'm going to have my party. So Queen Vashti said, mm, I ain't coming. How many of us women have said that? He got his thing. I got my thing, and I'm going to do my thing, and I'm going to let him do his thing, and I ain't coming. The re reason Queen Esther came to be was because after she didn't come, they, he, he got with his boys and he said, well, you know, hey, 
Um, what we gonna do about this? She embarrassed me. Mm -hmm. I told her to bring her fine self over here. Right. I bought her all them clothes. I got her all them jewels, and right. she wouldn't even show up. She wouldn't even show up. She's like, uh-uh. Oh, no, buddy. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. So he, caught, he talked to his boys, and his boys said, what are we going to do about that? She embarrassed you in front of the king. All your boys said she didn't even come. He said, they told him, they said, get rid of her. She got the bounce. She got the bounce. Queen Vashti's disobedience opened up a door for Queen Esther. Mm -hmm. Queen Esther was not seeking a position of queen. Queen Esther was just doing what the Lord had, she felt was right. Uh -huh. Even before she, they she said, go get all the women together. We, he said, I got some, they said, I got an idea, let's get them all together. We're going to get them together for you for a whole year. We're going to give them the best perfumes, we're going to give them the best jewels. Go get them together, we're going to bring them all together, and they all going to be virgins. And you can pick one, anyone you want, you can pick. When it was time for Queen Esther to go in after this time of cleansing and purification, they were getting them together, and they said, well, you can have whatever you want. If you want this amount of jewels, you can have that. If you want that amount of makeup, you can have that. And Queen Esther said, all right, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. She, she, wasn't, she wasn't like materialistic. She didn't just say, oh, all this stuff is free. I can have all this stuff. Give me all this. No, she just, with her graceful self, she just stood back and she said, I'm good. Pretty much, I'm good. I'll take whatever I have and I'm good. Mm -hmm. Because she was humble. Yeah. Most queens are not humble. Most queens, if I'm a queen, where is my crown? Mm -hmm. Where is my stuff? Where is my stuff? The Lord has called us women and men for such a time as this. Yeah. This whole world need a savior. Yeah. They, the, like Sister Ron said, Jesus' name is not mentioned in Esther. But he's in every thread of it, yeah, providing yeah. for. He, they may not see the name Jesus written on your shirt or in the back of your shoes or wherever. But they, we going The world is looking to see Jesus in us. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're looking to see without you mentioning his name. What do you possess yeah. on the inside? That's what Esther was portraying. She wasn't going around. Uh, well, before this ministry started, we wasn't going around. Oh, it's me. I'm this. I'm this. We've served for years in multiple ministries. I've had three first ladies. I've served all of them to the best of my ability simply because I'm not trying to be the queen. I'm trying to be the servant. They don't know what to call me. They don't know if to call me first lady, second lady, red lady, brown lady, blue lady. Why don't you call me sanctified lady? This, that's, that's the goal. The goal is to be sanctified, to be purified before the Lord so that the world can see a, a great big God that lives in me without me even opening my mouth. Yeah, I call Rhonda because Rhonda is a young person. Young people need to get to young people. You, you need to get to your people, but if you don't lead them, what, what's going to happen? If you don't lead them in your obedience to Christ, it's going to be the same way like Vashti. What, what Beyonce, to the left? What she said, to the right? What she said, to the left? All of us can be dismissed at any given time. Because the word of God is so rich and it's so true and you're not the only one. You're not the only one. Sometimes we think we're the only one. He wants us to possess him from the inside. Yeah. In the world to see a light that's shining out without us opening our mouth. That's in our finances. Yeah. Yeah. That's in how we treat one another. Yeah. That's in how we talk about each other behind our backs. He, the world. Do you know when we're talking about each other behind our back that the person that's listening, he's, they're dying from the inside even though they're listening. Uh -huh. Our churches are set up so that souls can be saved. We didn't start ministries because we didn't have anything to do. We want people to be saved. Esther took sacrifices. She made a plan. She's like, I can't tell everybody all my plans. I can't tell them that I'm one of them that they're going to kill. I'm a Jew. She had to go like undercover to make provisions for her people. Sometimes we talk so much. We tell our plans. We tell our plans. We tell... Sometimes the Lord wants a quietness and he wants a stillness in our lives so that we can 
He can bring out his glory, not our will, not our way. The, the key verse we have is, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 through 6. It says for everything there is a season and there is a time. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time to plant. There's a time to pluck up that which is planted. Whatever season that the Lord gives us, we got to make good use of it. We have to make good. And it starts with searching your heart. When, when Esther went call for the fast, I believe there was a time of searching. Time of getting to God. Time to pull, pull back that plate and just seek God. What am I going to do? I don't want my people to die. I don't want to die. What shall I do? And I believe in the time of her fasting and praying, he gave her what to do. We have to pull back. Because we need to know what to do. We need not to be entangled with the yoke of bondage again. We need not to be entangled with the foolishness, with the with the the noise in the in the air. They don't do this. We gonna do that. We don't need to be engaged in that. If you're gonna be saved in this last and evil day, this is a last and evil day. The Bible tells us. He said, the Scripture says, save yourself from this un. Poor generation. This is a crooked generation. Yeah, yeah, I can't right. save you. Right. I can't save you. I can only appeal to the blood of Christ yeah. and get myself yeah. in a position to be saved. We've been drawn away so long. Uh -huh. We've been drawn away so long. So Mordecai was her cousin. But there was also an enemy there. His name was Haman. Right. There was an enemy yeah. in the camp. There's an enemy in the camp. Yeah. And the reason why the enemy was so mad was because Mordecai would not pray to him. He wouldn't bow down to him. He like, I serve one God. And I'm not bowing. So this made him upset. So he said, well, I'm going to kill you and everybody you know. Oh, you're going to bow. That's what Mordecai's, I mean, that's what Haman's desire was for Mordecai to, die, to bow to him. Because he didn't bow. He said, I'm a, how evil is that? And that's how we do. We got a little bit of bit of Haman in us. If they don't do what I want to do, they don't do it how I want to do. I'm gonna make their name dirt in the whole world. They do it on the job. Yep. Unfortunately, they do it in the church, in the place that the Lord has brought us out of. If a person doesn't do it our way, sanctified people, Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, he done gave me the mic again. He done did that again. And I asked him to buy me my own mic. I need my own mic. Simply because some stuff just got to be called out. In the church, we should not blackball people and make them feel bad because they didn't make the decision that we wanted. It's not right. It's ungodly. It's unholy. And you need to check yourself out. And what we can do, we can ask God to forgive us. And then we can forget them things that are behind. And then we can press forward. One thing about it, when all this is said and done, we're going to cross each other. We're going to say things that's not right to each other. But we can, don't just act like you didn't do it though. Hallelujah. Don't act like you didn't do it. Don't act like it didn't happen. It happened. It happened the way that they said it happened. Just how they said it happened, it happened. But we have a recourse. We can ask God to help us. All have sinned. Everybody. Everybody has sinned. Everybody has come short of the glory of God. But where your forgiveness come in, you have to acknowledge it. And then you press forward. And then you go on. You don't have to keep walking. Every time testimony service come open, you ain't got to say, oh, I'm wrong, sister, so-and-so, and I did this. And the Lord... It's behind you. Right. Put it behind you and move forward yeah. so that the Lord can bless us. Yeah. Not just, I'm of an age to where, like my husband said, we don't have to do this a long time because we already on another side. Mm -hmm. But you young people, y'all need to get it together. Yeah. In the sense that you need to leave your peers out of darkness. They have went so far back. Uh. Like they never even knew God. Right. Some of our young people act like they have never knew God. 
Esther as a queen had a plan. You a queen. You a queen. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a man. I, I, I was born. When I was born, my father, before I came to California, my mother's uncle was a pastor from Arkansas. So we were in church ever since I was born, from one church to another church. So I do have the word in me. And I do know that if the word is in you and you live it, it'll just keep growing and growing and growing and growing. And we need it to grow because these are just walls. There's a whole world out there that needs to be saved. If, if Esther had not been obedient, some of her characteristics was that she had to be silent when it was time to be silent. She had to be graceful when it was time to be graceful. She had to come up with a plan. She had to come up with a purpose. And she had to forget about her. She was already in the, in the palace. She could have said, well, y'all just go on it and do what y'all, I'm here. I have arrived. And that's how we do something. I've arrived. Now you just make it on your own. You get it the best way. I got my chicken and my grits, and you go get yours. I got mine. That's not how we're supposed to be. Once you get there, you're supposed to bring other people along. Don't just forget about the bridges that brought you over. There are some bridges that stop by your house and help you to get over. And once you get over, don't forget. Don't don't forget. And teach your children. Don't teach your children to be grateful. Yeah. That there were some bridges that brought us over. And we sometimes we want to say, well, oh, they're old and they, they this and they that. Yes, you're right. You're right. But they haven't always been old. That's right. That's right. They haven't always been limping around. Yeah. Some of the limps are because they provided for us. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. The reason why their eyes probably are black is because they've been crying for you all night. Oh. Asking God to help us. As a, as a queen, when you when you when you're in a royal position, act royally. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. We don't carry ourselves like any and everybody. As a woman, as a man, what's good about the Bible, of, of all the things, there's everything good about it. But he's asking me to be the queen. He's asking him to be the king. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He has things that the woman is responsible for, and he has things that the man is responsible for. And she do her part. He does his part. They meet there in the middle. God is right there to meet them. And so we don't have to do this, man, this is the men, it's the women, it's the men, it's the boys. It's a family. It's a family. It's a family affair. Esther was dealing with a family affair. And even though Haman meant it for evil. Mm -hmm. The same gallows that he laid for Mordecai. Mm -hmm. she, Esther said, well, when like Sister Ronnie said, he said, okay, I'm going to have my party too. And she invited him. And so Haman said, oh yeah, the queen got me a party. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm in. I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm in. But what happened? Her king went to sleep one night and he fell asleep. He said, he was reading the, reading the Chronicles. He was reading the books. He said, Mordecai stopped some spies from killing me years ago. What happened? How did we pay him? How did we repay him? He said, well, we didn't. He's like, well, he asked Haman, the enemy, what should we do for Mordecai? How can we celebrate? Because he was so arrogant and thought it was for him. He said, oh, let's have a party. Let's parade him all through the city. Let's do this and that. But he didn't realize that the scripture that the Lord gave me, he said, I'm going to prepare you a table in the presence of your enemies. I'm going to prepare you a feast in the presence of your enemies. Haman was preparing a feast, which he thought was for him, but it was for Mordecai. So the, the king, when he said, well, what are we going to do? He said, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And then when his his whole situation came to light, the tables turned. Yes. And the same gallows that he had set out for Mordecai, those were the ones that he was killed on himself. Right. And the Jews are still celebrating. They're like, Haman, God, he got what was coming. So they still celebrate. Today, they're still celebrating the fact that Haman meant to kill them, but he ended up getting killed himself. What I'm saying for you for this, this lesson, set yourself up for a place that you can make good choices. 
You can make good decisions. You can make sound decisions. Those decisions don't come by our own intuition. The only good decision that we will ever make will come through the word of God. This is the word. If we hide it in our hearts and we sin not against him, we're going to make good decisions. Anything outside of this is just an opinion. It's just what you want to do. The, the, they didn't make you do that. Nobody made him uh, do all the devilment that he did. He did that because in, in this flesh dwells what? No good thing. The same thing that was in Haman to do that evil. He's going to kill a whole nation of people. A whole slew of, slew of people just because they didn't bother him. That nature is working in each and every one of us right now. That nature, the things that you think that you wouldn't do, if you don't stay tapped into the word of God, you will do the same thing because in this flesh, nothing good for us. The only thing that we have in this royal priesthood is a great big God who's going to help us through every situation, through every situation that we go through. God's going to help us keep our hands in the hands of the man with the master plan. Don't worry about the rest of it. It could be for such a time as this. Whatever the Lord's assignment is for us, we got to do it and we got to do it wholeheartedly. We got to forget those things which are behind. We got to press and every, every season that he gives us in our life, we got to make good on it. We don't have time. Greater Light Ministry, we don't have time to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We don't have time to go shaking our hips on Saturday night and come in church with all this all sanctified. You don't have time for that foolishness. You do not have the Bible. We got to separate ourselves from these worldly lusts and these things that's going to bring us back into captivity. We've been delivered. It's up to us to stay delivered. Well, you can't do it on your own. We want the power of the Holy Ghost in our church. If it's not, if it's, if, if the power of the Holy Ghost is not here, the numbers don't count, the money don't count, decoration don't count. If the power of the Holy Ghost is not in the royal temple, what is the point? Where is the temple? I am the temple. My body is the temple of the living God. Don't don't be persuaded by your fellow brethren. Take this like I'm saying it. That you think you're going to do all that. And then you won't come up in here. And the Holy the, he, it, Those waters ain't going to never meet. And we cannot. One thing Esther, she had fear. But she could not be so afraid that she doesn't stand up for the truth. That's right. She cannot be so fearful. We're not over here. We're shaking in the book. No, stand up for what your forefathers taught you. They taught you that God, without godliness, you ain't going to see God. Yeah. They, got, they didn't teach you. They taught us that the wages of sin yes. is death. Yes. It's still death. Yes. The way, you, you cannot go out and do all the things that your boys and your girls want you to do. Uh -huh. And then call yourself sanctified. That's why I say, call me whatever you want, but in the midst of it, call me saved. Yeah. Because that's what I'm, that's the goal. Yeah. The goal of this, if you're not trying to be saved, we can get good music. We got great music, and I love you, and I appreciate you all helping us out. Because we just getting started, and we're trying to do the best that we can. Music ain't going to save you. No. Yeah. Yeah. A good song service is not going to save you. The, my former pastor, he said, you put a music to a horse, he'll prance. Uh -huh. We love music. It's in our bones. It's in our rhythm. They said, I can't dance. I don't believe them. I do not believe it. I do it my way. I have my own rhythm. I have my own song. I make up songs because I know that the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and it's true and do it through all generations. So whatever your beat is, do it. But the song is not going to save you. The choir is not going to save you. The people in your in your circle that say, okay, we can club tonight. We can go and we can do shake our butts. We can wear the tightest pants that we can wear and we can come in church and everything is alright. Not so. Not so. Holiness is unto the Lord. Your body is a temple of the living God and you are supposed to possess it with honor. You knew what it was when you put it on. You knew what it was when you were shaking your hips last night or the night before or the other night. He gave me the mic again. <laughs> One thing that I will never be is somebody else other than me. Make that declaration. I am myself and the Lord is working on me. Don't call me and tell me what I said. was. Not, I'm picking on you. I don't want to hear. I'm going to be me because I know who 
holiness is right. And I know, hallelujah, the devil is trying to slip us a mickey. You said you believe in Pastor Howard A. Swanson. I want you to do some of the things that he taught you down throughout the years. For such a time as this, these churches are opening up. And we are so grateful for ministry. We are so grateful for people that have decided to take up their own substance to prepare a place for us. This is, a, this is not for my husband and I. We have our own house. We have three cars. Two of them got pink slips. The other one's on the way. So don't worry about the cars. Don't worry about the money. We, we work jobs. We do the best that we can. And we put our money in our business. And we put our money into whatever we need. We've sown into many ministries. And some of them won't say it. And I don't need to say it. Hallelujah. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to tell you the truth. You are called for such a time as this. And perhaps you may not want to accept the call. Perhaps you don't want to do the work. Perhaps you just want to be left alone. You want them to stop preaching. You want them to stop teaching. You want grandma to stop calling. You want them everything to cease. But we love you too much. He says, so you got to snatch some of them from the fire. We, we, we love you too much. I was talking to my nephews yesterday. I'm telling them what the word says. It's up to them to accept it. But people of God, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. We can do as many seminars. We can go on whatever we want to do. But if the word is not there. And you're not. Not only don't leave the word on the table. We set the table. We're going to set the table. It's up to you to pick up the fork and eat. It's up to you to eat. Esther was a queen, but she was the best queen I've ever seen you, because Lord. she was humble and she had character and she had perseverance and she was unselfish and she had plans for people other than herself. And that's what God is looking for. You don't have to worry about clothes and shoes and stuff. He said, I'll add that to you. If you just seek me first, everything that you have need of, I will provide. I want to tell you, honey, seek God. Seek God. Everything you have need of, he will provide. Stay in the course. Do right by the people. And God's going to bless you. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about numbers. I would prefer five people if we're on a mission to be saved. If our goal is to be saved. And not only us be saved, go and compel them to come. Yeah. Go get your cousins. Yeah. Sometimes go get your uncles and your, your brothers and your sisters and tell them about the gospel. Because what yeah. one of my nieces said yesterday, she said, I, we've been to so many funerals. She said, but I'm just so used to being old people dying. I wasn't, you, I wasn't ready for this 27-year-old. Yeah. I wasn't ready for this. Yeah. But when it, it's home, it's home. Yeah. And we did a lot of crying. We're going to do some more crying. But in the midst of crying, tell people the truth. Get back to church. Young people, give your children something to lean on. Give them the word. They lean on you. Once you finish, you got to set the, set the little birdie free. But don't set him free uncut. Don't set him free without all the tools that he needs to live. That's one thing I love about Pastor. He gave us tools. Yeah. He gave us tools to use so that we could be saved. Not to be popular. Not to just say, well, we, oh, I'm here. I'm around. You get your own. I got mine. No, we're supposed to be helpers one to another. We're supposed to be one. The harvest is right. You don't have to worry about the people. There's people in our jobs. There's people in our neighborhoods. There's how about people in our family? Call them. Call them. Call them. Tell them that they need to be saved. They may not want to hear it, but that's the good news. That's the good news. And one thing, and I'm going to close. I'm going to close because I know we got to go. I'm going to close. But I'm going to read this verse. It says, Lord Jesus, please prepare me for this time. Paul says, salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed, Romans chapter 13, verse 11. 
If salvation was near then, how much nearer is it now? Forget about the past and run. Forget about the past and run. We're running. Where are we running? We're foreseeing. We are also are compassed about with so great, great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How do we do that? Romans chapter 1, chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. COVID is here, but saints, friends, people, we got to do some searching. We got to research what is the real will of God. We're back in the building, but we got to come in with a mind to worship the true and living God. And it starts before we walk in the doors. It starts with a prepared heart. So I, I admonish you as kings and queens, we need to do a soul search to find out what we need God to do in our own lives. We don't have to worry about everybody else. The whole world is going around. There's some things going on I ain't never heard in my life. The world is going. They're going to do their thing. But small flock, keep yourselves unspotted from this world. Pastor would preach all the time the coming of the Lord. You felt like it was coming in the next five minutes. We are so close to the coming of the Lord. And I believe this COVID is just a way to get us our minds filled with all the junk. All this stuff. We got to go here. We got to go here. We got to go. Go and get yourself a secret place. Well, you can find how to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, called, called. Esther was called. She didn't go in there just to go because she didn't have nothing to do. She wasn't even seeking the position. She went because she was called to it. He found that the way she carried herself, she said, I got to have that one. Mm -hmm. Out of all the women that was available to him, he saw something in, in that one. He said, I got to have that one. Mm -hmm. That's my queen. That's what God wants from us. Yeah. Look at Jesus and say, Hallelujah. I got to have him. Yeah. Yeah. I got to have Jesus. Yeah. Everything else yeah. is beside the point. Thank you, Lord. He wants relationship with us. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with how we look. It has nothing to do with how much money we have. It has nothing to do with our status. And if we the big guy or the little guy, it has to do with a heart. Yeah. It's a heart condition. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. And we are called. Will you answer for such a time as this? God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn to pieces. Confess my offering. Lead me to his throne. And leave me there alone to bear in his presence and sing to him this song. Come on, just take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. Here's my heart.
and sing to him this song. Come on now, take me to. Oh, how much to bring, Sister Rhonda. Give her a mic. Come on, yeah. yeah. Y'all know I'm going to know the right word. Come on, take me to the king. Take me to the king. Come on, yeah. Touch the green. Come on, my heart. Tori Jesus is my offering. Come on. Lead me to the cross. Come on, lead me there. Lead me there alone. Come on. Come on and sing to him. You sing some of it, Rhonda. Take me to the king. 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 Come on, take me to the king. see the king. I'm here to let you know we're living in a dying world. People are dying all around us. You need to know who the Lord is for yourself today. Somebody don't know God in the pardon of their sins. This is your opportunity to come to the Lord. The Bible says, all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm here to offer salvation today. You may not know the Lord, but I'm here to tell you, Peter had the keys. He said, repent every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's available today. Somebody needs to know the Lord. Somebody needs to come to the Lord. Somebody needs. It's life and death. It's life and death. If you're listening to me today, it's life and death. Please, 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 please. I'm pleading with you. You need to go to the king. Hallelujah. Oh, take me to the king. Yeah. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. Yeah. My heart is going to be. But I want to offer you. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. I need the Lord Jesus.
those around the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. And we want you to have salvation. God's arm is not so short that he cannot save you. Whatever position you may be in today, you may be weak in your spirit and feel like you can't make it. I mean, here let you know you can't make it today. God paid such a price for you and I. I don't shout. He paid such a price for you and I. And he knows exactly where we at. He knows exactly what you need. All you have to do is ask him for it. Hallelujah. We need God. We need God. God knows what you need. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows your weaknesses. He knows when you can't make it. We ask him, God, right now to touch us. Lord, as we look to you right now, we ask you to touch everyone under the sound of my voice. We thank you for this service that you have allowed us to have today. We ask you to bless high glory everyone. Meet them at the point of their needs. Lord, we need you. If there's never been a time that we need you, we need you right now. We thank you for every word. We thank you for the first lady, God. We ask you to bless her. We thank you for Sister Rhonda, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of those who are laboring in this ministry. Lord, we don't know what you're going to do, but we know you're going to do something, Lord. We ask you to move. Give us strength for this journey that we may be able to make it. Give us strength, God, that we may be able to tell a dying world that they need to be saved. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins that we may have committed, God. Let us come clean before you, Lord. See us, God, right now, God. Touch and remove everything that's not like you, that we may be saved, God. We realize that it's a small flock. We realize it's a narrow way, God, but keep us in that narrow way, God. And we will give you all praise. We give you all glory and all honor. And everyone said, in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a praise right there. Come on, give him a praise. Come on. Take me to the king.